The history of our planet is incredibly long and shrouded in mysteries from its very beginning. These mysteries are increasingly becoming clear to us thanks to the diligent work of scientists. Their knowledge allows us to delve into the distant past and understand how life on Earth was organized before. If you know where to look, clues revealing the mystery of the origin of life on our planet can still be found. Billions of years ago, our planet was completely different. It was an empty planet where not a single bird songs or animal's footsteps could be heard. However, around 500 million years ago, the emergence of all living things began. Sea creatures, which had long only inhabited the water, started to venture onto the land. This transition to land was linked to changes in the environment, such as the emergence of coastal zones, uneven distribution of resources, and competition for them. Later, this transition would give us animals whose sizes are incomparable to current ones, the dinosaurs. However, despite the might of these inhabitants, they couldn't overcome the challenges of the universe and permanently left our planet losing the battle for a place under the sun. Yet, not all inhabitants of that time disappeared. Some soared so high in the sky that they managed to survive until our time. Birds. Some of them measure no more than 10 centimeters, while the wingspan of others exceeds tens of meters. Some soar so high that they are impossible to see, while others cannot fly at all but what united them all was the struggle for survival. One representative of that time was the Smilodon, a formidable predator that lived five million years ago. Its gaze is fixed on a giant forest rakos. The height of this bird was two meters, but due to its atrophied wings, it couldn't fly. Both sides are armed and ready to claim victory in a challenging battle. In the world, there are more than 10 million species of animals and plants. However, these 10 million are only 1% of all the species that have ever lived on the planet. 
diving into the past, we will learn about the 99% that once inhabited our planet. We will tell you the story of the great battle, the battle for survival, the history of the planet as it was, is and will be. This is the story of life. Billions of years ago, everything must have had a beginning, an impulse that would later give rise to the development of all living organisms on our planet. This impulse likely occurred about four billion years ago. It was then that our planet began to acquire living organisms, including those that would become us, humans. It is likely that during this period, the atmosphere, temperature, and conditions for the emergence of living organisms stabilized on our planet. Liquid water and solar energy provided living organisms with an almost ideal chemical environment for the inception of life. The exact process of the origin of life is lost in the depths of ages, but it gave birth to a tiny living cell, Luca, the last universal common ancestor. From Luca, everything originated. It became the precursor of three domains of life, bacteria, archaea, and eukaryotes. The first chemical traces of life, approximately 3.5 billion years old, were found in the rocks of Australia. Life may have originated in hot springs, where there were plenty of nutrients, including nucleotides. Oxygenic photosynthesis began to emerge in this period. Thanks to it, bacteria and algae actively developed. Complex organisms began to appear approximately 2 billion years ago. These were fungi, plants, and animals. The climate of that time constantly changed, from hot and arid temperatures to prolonged glaciations when the temperature dropped to minus 40 degrees Celsius. However, even in such temperatures, life found ways to survive on the planet. Spragina, worm-like animals that inhabited our planet billions of years ago, may be the ancestors of modern animals. It would be billions of years before the familiar animals for us appeared, but even then, it was clear that our Earth was gaining its inhabitants. These were just its first steps. Five hundred million years ago, all life of that era existed in water. Land was not a safe habitat, forcing living organisms to seek refuge beneath the water's surface. However, 500 million years ago, during the Cambrian period, a sudden explosion of diverse living organisms occurred, ancestors of many present-day representatives of various animal kingdoms. This abrupt event, though spanning millions of years, is known to science as the Cambrian Explosion. The earliest animals that achieved dominance were simple organisms. These invertebrates, animals without a single bone, ruled the seas and oceans for millions of years. However, animal life on land did not yet exist. Throughout history, there has been an eternal struggle for survival, with leadership shifting from one family to another and from one dynasty to another. The first to dominate land were plants. Their emergence was driven by an adaptation for a simpler life. On land, plants found it easier to access the sunlight needed for photosynthesis. The land provided plants with better access to the minerals necessary for their growth. Most importantly, they temporarily managed to triumph in the struggle for survival, surpassing their underwater adversaries.
plants created conditions that gradually allowed invertebrates to strengthen and conquer the world. But the battle persisted, and invertebrates couldn't rule forever. They were surpassed by a new dynasty of animals that excelled in strength. These creatures also originated from the aquatic environment, amphibians. Their bodies were structured differently, featuring four limbs and a spine, a body structure that would later become the standard. However, they remained tied to the water. In modern times, the Chinese giant salamander holds the title of the largest amphibian. Its body length, including the tail, reaches 180 centimeters, and it weighs no more than 70 kilograms. This amphibian inhabits eastern China, exclusively living in clean and cold mountainous water bodies. Yet millions of years ago, individuals of much larger sizes roamed the Earth. Amphibians gave rise to another dynasty, the reptiles. They could conquer even the driest lands, striding widely across the planet. The first force to rule the world appeared in history. From the first reptiles, the most famous dynasty emerged. Its rule lasted for 150 million years, the dinosaurs. This group truly exhibited incredible strength. They were gigantic and fearless, equipped with sharp teeth that could pierce the flesh of other creatures. They had long necks to reach leaves from the tallest trees. Some could fly so high that they were practically invisible. These creatures astound our minds with their diversity. However, even they couldn't adapt to changing events and permanently left our planet 66 million years ago. Their extinction was interrupted by fatal misfortune, a meteorite impact. Dinosaurs could not prepare for such an event. They lacked the resources to safeguard themselves. Other inhabitants also lacked such resources, but they were constructed differently. Unlike the large dinosaurs, these inhabitants were much smaller. It was because of this that they preferred to live underground, to hide from the dinosaurs. This strategy saved them. Mammals emerged as the top living beings. One of their representatives would change our planet like no other. And it is us, humans. The rises and falls of this dynasty over four billion years were not just a matter of chance. Throughout all this time, from the inception of life to today's diversity of species, the world adheres to clear rules rules of life. The first rule states, the most adaptable always survive. Arctic hares, the largest hares in North America, surprisingly have relatively short ears compared to their relatives. This is an excellent example of what an animal can sacrifice for survival in harsh conditions. Although long ears could help detect predators, shorter ears reduce the loss of precious heat, which is significantly more important for Arctic hares. When it comes to physiological or structural adaptations, dense fur takes the first place. This thick fur is a remarkable gift of nature to Arctic hares. It helps them retain body heat and protects them from the cold and strong air currents. Their pores assist them in swiftly running on the snow's surface without sinking, and the white color of their fur also aids in survival through camouflage. Some behavioral traits also help adapt to harsh conditions. Their posture and orientation help minimize the body's exposed surface area. Similarly, during feeding and rest, they position their bodies in a way that directs the main air currents onto their backs. 
Both of these behavioral modifications help them retain body heat. All eggs laid by a butterfly look the same, but each has its unique gene combinations, making each larva absolutely unique. Some eggs have genes that will help them survive, and these genes will be passed down from generation to generation. Eventually, some caterpillars will be so different that they will turn into an entirely new species better adapted to the environment. This is evolution. But not only animals adapt. In the world, all living things simultaneously fight for survival, including plants. If left unattended, ants or caterpillars will devour them completely. However, the plant has developed its own methods of survival. Poison in the leaves is deadly to all pests. This chemical weapon is the plant world's defense. However, a new species of caterpillars emerges immune to the poison and does not consume plants with eggs laid on the leaves. In response, other butterflies only lay eggs on plants where there are no larvae yet giving their offspring a better chance of survival. This cycle continues endlessly throughout the entire life of any living being. This lifelong struggle, guided by the first rule that the most adaptable survive, has produced the immense diversity of species existing today. The second rule of life is competition. It is the driving force of adaptation, and the most ruthless competition occurs among similar beings. Enter the Fororakos, a massive bird with atrophied wings, rendering it unable to fly. The shore of this water body is its territory. However, not all inhabitants agree with this notion. Another Fororakos also has its eye on this place. The owner is forced to react and defend its honor. A confrontation ensues. Similar to peacocks, they size each other up, evaluating strengths. It resembles a mating dance, but in this dance, only one emerges victorious. At the climax, when both of them are in close proximity, something none of them could have anticipated occurs. The Smilodon, observing their ritual, has long set its eyes on them. It pounces on one of the Fororakos, forcing it to leave this world forever. The cunning of the Smilodons from the Mammalian family became one of the reasons for the extinction of Fororakos. Competition within a species and between different species has always been the driving force of evolution. One of the most formidable inhabitants of the aquatic environment was the Mosasaur. This huge marine lizard terrified almost everyone who lived with it. Stretching over 17 meters in length and equipped with large teeth reaching up to 15 centimeters, it was invulnerable to other marine creatures. Although some marine beings also had decent chances of defeating it, such as the pliosaur. In the scientific world, the largest pliosaur is called Predator X. Despite its limited intellectual features, Predator X had a phenomenally strong bite, capable of even stunning the Mosasaur. Its large skull could pose problems even for the Mosasaur. Moreover, it was more agile. But despite its good characteristics, it could not survive longer than the Mosasaur, leaving this world about 110 million years ago. Therefore, it is essential not only to be competitive, but also to know how to correctly apply one's strengths. The third rule. But not only warriors change in battles. The terrain on which creatures collide also plays a crucial role. They can migrate, changing their location. But sometimes, even their accustomed territory acquires different characteristics. Previously, territories were connected into one large landmass called Pangaea. The entire Pangaea had a relatively similar climate. However, in the process of our planet's development, continents began to separate from each other, forming new and diverse climatic conditions.
This forces us to approach the third rule of life. The Earth never stays in a stable state for long. Sometimes this contributes to life, and sometimes it hinders it. Throughout history, volcanoes have always been one of the most important sources of change. Eruptions lasting 1,000 years repeatedly covered vast areas of our planet with lava and dust. The atmosphere filled with gases, climate changed, and in the worst cases, it led to mass extinctions of species. For example, after the meteorite impact, due to large volcanic eruptions, our planet was literally engulfed in dust. There were other periods when the Earth suffered from freezing winds, and its territory was literally covered with snow. During this period, huge mammoths wandered through vast, snowy deserts in search of food. planet never stays still. Sudden changes on the planet created many obstacles for life, from toxic seas to vast wastelands and periods of endless rain. Our planet has seriously tested all living things four times in history. And each time, as a result of mass extinction, over three quarters of all species disappeared forever. But there was a period when there were no catastrophes on Earth for 100 million years. This allowed one dynasty to become the most powerful in the world. It was the era of dinosaurs. It was due to such comfortable conditions that dinosaurs were able to reproduce in enormous quantities. The quintessence of all dinosaur development is the Tyrannosaurus rex. The Tyrannosaur was one of the largest dinosaurs in the history of our planet. It lived in the late Jurassic period and became extinct during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event. Like other members of its family, the Tyrannosaur was a bipedal predator with a massive skull balanced by a long, heavy and stiff tail. Compared to its large and powerful hind limbs, its front limbs were quite small but exceptionally powerful for its size, equipped with two clawed fingers. As the largest carnivorous animal in its ecosystem, the Tyrannosaur was most likely a super predator, hunting hadrosaurs, ceratopsians, and possibly even sauropods. It was unique in every way, possessing high speed and maneuverability, making it nearly invulnerable to other dinosaurs. And these are myosaurs. Unlike the Tyrannosaur, they are harmless herbivores. They moved in large herds, and this method of traveling was not chosen by chance, as herds provided them with better chances of survival. In their case, quantity ensured safety, not just for adults. This female is hurrying back to her nest. Translated from Greek, Myasaur means good mother. Like other females, she has arranged her nest in the midst of a large colony. On the way to her nest, she passes by aggressive mothers guarding their offspring. Finally, the female reaches her own nest. She feeds her baby just like a bird feeds its chicks, and she will protect them in the nest for many months until they grow up and join the herd.
The stability of life on the planet was ensured not only by the large number, but also the immense variety of dinosaurs in all shapes and sizes. Every species is forced to defend itself against its opponents and fight for its own survival. Some, for survival, were forced to hide in deep burrows, like Morganucodon. It lacked the qualities of dinosaurs and was small enough to resist them in some way. This is one of the oldest mammals, existing in the late Triassic and presumably extinct in the early Jurassic. Who knows, perhaps today's moles evolved from it. Its lifestyle was very similar to that of these inhabitants. Morgan Eucodon, apparently, led a nocturnal lifestyle and spent the day in its burrow. Its diet consisted of insects and other small animals. But not all animals of that time led a similar lifestyle. Triceratops are significantly different from the defenseless myosaurs and morganucodons. This formidable dinosaur, with three horns and weighing around five tons, adapted to a world where the best defense is an attack. To be able to defend itself and its offspring, Triceratops had to eat a lot. This means eating the most nutritious food, wherever it may grow. This time, the female wandered too far from the herd and found herself on the edge of the forest. Her concerns are not in vain. In these forests, members of her kind are not the only giants. Along with her offspring, Tyrannosaurus has also come here. However, their goal is not plants, but Triceratops. The offspring are faster than their mother, but they attack together. Triceratops can fend off the young ones, but not their mother. They lack both speed and strength. Only a group of their kind can save this female. She runs back to where her relatives await her. Only together can they resist such a huge predator. And they succeed. This species was invulnerable, but events intervened for which there is no panacea. A massive fireball, reaching speeds faster than a bullet, hurtled towards Earth. The impact occurred 66 million years ago. The ball fell near the territory of present-day Mexico, leaving a crater 25 kilometers wide. The tremors felt by the Earth are indescribable. The world was buried in eternal darkness for several years because the pillars of smoke that rose into the sky completely covered the entire globe. It was almost impossible to survive for dinosaurs and plants alike. Three quarters of all living things on Earth at that time evaporated. However, what is death for some is the beginning of life for others. Flowering plants took their place on our planet. These plants, including the majority of modern species, became dominant after the extinction of dinosaurs. They include grasses, shrubs and flowers, serving as the foundation even today. These small and weak plants were unable to overcome the large trees of the dinosaur era. But after the asteroid impact, they managed to grow, even with a small amount of incoming sunlight. Mammals began to reign on Earth. These creatures seized the moment and ascended to the Olympus of living beings. Their adaptability provided an excellent opportunity to reproduce, thereby increasing their numbers. But there were those who survived. Birds. The only dinosaurs that managed to survive 66 million years ago. Today, their number exceeds 10,000 individuals. It is quite possible that these creatures survived thanks to their abilities to soar in the sky 
and walk on the ground. Perhaps they managed to fly away from the explosion site. This remains to be discovered. But the fact that they are the only descendants of dinosaurs is an indisputable fact agreed upon by all scientists. The ability to adapt and compete is the main force of evolution. Events can occur incredibly abruptly, forcing all living organisms to face unexpected consequences, plunging them into a world of chaos. But only the most adaptable are capable of prolonging their lineage and adapting to external changes. When you see any living organism, whether it's a flower or a butterfly, remember that it's just 1% of what existed on our Earth. The remaining 99% is yet to be discovered, and it's evident that we have very little chance of finding each of them. In this video series, we want to draw your attention to the history of our planet and the life rules it dictated to us. We aim to acquaint you with the countless diversity of living beings that have ever existed on our planet and transport you back millions of years to times when man did not exist and never will exist again. This is the Space Progress Channel. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell, because in the next video we will tell you about the transition from water to land and why it did not go according to plan and could have led to a catastrophe.